Good afternoon. Today is Wednesday and it is mid-December and um, my name is Kendra Luebuga and this is my watercolor blog. Today I want to talk about this project again. This one has been going on. This is the fifth one in this series and I want to talk about a couple of things. Um, first, you can see that my watercolor block is starting to delaminate on the sides, these blocks have, um, it's like a wax that attaches it and it's starting to just come off by itself. So it's sort of telling me that it's about to be done. Good thing is I have nothing that I want to do on these edges. <laughs> it's really, as you might imagine, this area that is the struggle at the moment. Um, I wanted to show you something. If I take and just cover up this part, you know, somewhere around in there. How does the painting read to you differently than when it's the full painting? Oops. And if I took and covered a top, how does the painting read to you? What's going on here is that the top is more um, attractive because it has a bigger range of values. It has darkest darks, like over in here, this is quite dark, there's some dark areas here, and it has the whitest whites, here, here, a little bit up in here. And down here, we don't have a wide range of values. All of these values are right in the mid-range, so they don't pop to your eye. They don't draw your eye um, the same way as, as the top sort of two-thirds does. So one solution for this painting would be to just cut there and have more of a square painting and I think that would be a fine solution. Another solution is that I can continue to work on the values down here and see what can come out um, from from bumping up I think making them darker down here that might be a nice offset to the the light colors up here making it super dark down here might be a nice offset so so that's where this is um, maybe I'll show you some of my painting in progress work and that's all I have for today thanks for watching ah okay here we are and this is the start of a brand new painting. I'm still working on that old one, but I thought I'd show you the very beginning touches of something new. So what you see here is a page that I tore out from a magazine called Inspired House. It's an old magazine. I don't think it's um, a going concern anymore, but I have a bunch of old magazines because as an architect, I collect these old architecture magazines to flip through when I need some inspiration. So I saw these red chairs with their little table in between and the window sort of behind them. And I thought this could make something interesting, um, an, interior, um, an interior scene and uh, I could make something interesting out of it. So I'm taking just the chairs and I think I'll take the window too, but perhaps not the shape of the window and may probably not the placement of the window that's there. Um, so you can see me here drawing with a water soluble pencil. It's a watercolor pencil. So it will completely dissolve in watercolor and I'm using I think it's indigo blue because I want those cushions to turn out green. So I'm doing my careful sort of architectural drawing to put something of reality into what is going to be hopefully another piece that is a bit more abstract um, with just a little a little hint of reality in there. So this gives me the lines of those chairs. A little information on how they're supported. And now I 
need to get that little table in the middle. All right. Yep, so now I'm sitting back and looking and thinking of what to do next. What to do next? <laughs> By the way, while I'm doing watercolor, I like to watch um, a program called Small Things Brought Together. Um, it's hosted by a woman named Robin Love, and she speaks to artists. And it's a nice one to listen to while I'm working on something because I don't need to necessarily watch the screen. I'm not very much called to watch the screen, different from if I'm watching something like a Netflix show or something like that where I might um, stop painting and just watch TV. Um, I either do that or I listen to an audiobook. Right now I'm into an audiobook called Infinite Powers. And I think the author's name is Strogatz. It's about calculus. So there we go. I put in sort of a the, the line at the uh, at the base of the wall, and a little indication perhaps of that rug. And I brought out some of my collection of sticks. I'm going to use the stick as a straight edge. So oftentimes people will pull out um, a ruler as a straight edge, but I've started to prefer my sticks as straight edges because they are not perfect. And um, I like things better when they're a little bit, there's a little jagged piece in there or they're a little crooked. Um, but if you use it as the straight edge, now let's see if I'll bump this picture up a little so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to make a diagonal grid, which is of course different from what is in the photograph. But I thought with the last one how much I liked that sort of um, plaid motion that I thought I would put a diagonal here and completely disregarding um, perspective for sure absolutely it's just like a flat diag and dropping in some oh gosh what is that yellow I know on previous videos I've also forgotten what color that is called <laughs> but that's opera rose that I'm dropping into it it's a wet and wet technique where you drop wet wet into wet. In fact, I always, I always hear my, I have a, a friend who died about a year and a half ago, and um, we would paint together every Thursday night, a group of friends. We still um, see each other now and then, but we used to see each other every Thursday night, and Jan would occasionally be working wet, as she said. I'm working wet, She'd say, I'm working wet, people, I'm working wet, <laughs> which means I can't look at something else because the paint is wet and I'm mixing the color into the paint while it's wet right now. So <laughs> um, she's not going to look up from her painting for anything. <laughs> I miss her. <clears throat> Anyway, so you can see how I'm dropping the yellow into those chair cushions and what's making them green is the green of the, or the blue, the indigo blue that I was drawing with. That's the uh, watercolor pencil that's making it blue. And later I'm going to drop a little bit of cyan blue into that to get it a little bit bumped up while the water is still wet, while the paint is still wet on the page. Yeah, so this is what's called working wet. Now 
I'm going to lay in a little bit more of that diagonal pattern in a minute. And then you'll see me doing some splattering in order to get some backwashes. This is a, the paintbrush is a round. It's called a round. I think it's a number 10 or a number eight round. It's pretty much the only paintbrush in my collection that I reach for these days. I have a number of them, but I reach for the, that round. There I go, push the painting up so you can see it. It holds a good point still, and um, I think it's a synthetic, um, synthetic hair. It's not a, I don't think it's a sable or a squirrel hair. I think it's a, I think it's a synthetic. I'll have to check. There we go. Haven't put everything in because I need to drop my pink, my opera rose in there. Bingo. There it is. Let them run together and mix on the page. careful around those chair legs because I don't know if I want to have them white or really dark. It's got to be one or the other, but I got to leave that decision up to the future. I'll link that information about um, the, the YouTube video that I like to listen to when I'm painting um, the small things brought together so that if you want to check it out, you can. I'll put that in the show notes. There I am splattering. See me just vigorously dropping some clean, clean water onto that wet paint. And you can see the pattern that it starts to make. It'll change quite a bit as it dries. Um, so I go ahead and paint in a few more of my di of my di um, diamonds, and, and then I'll hit it up again with some more splatters. This color combo works really well because the orange that is mixing on those diamonds and the green, well, the red actually and the green, they are complementary colors. They're opposites on the color wheel. That's why they work. It's like a Christmas colors, right? That's why they go together. They are opposites and so our eyes attracted to them. Here I go with the splattering of water again. <laughs> it's like the money shot. You can start to see some really great back runs in some of the diagonals. It won't do this after it dries. So by now that I'm recording this, that painting is completely dry. And um, so those won't back run anymore. It's just a very limited time period in which you can do that. 
All right, and that's it for today. There's the drying piece.